Alrighty. Mm. Well, I can't get my chair adjusted. So, because I am sitting right now. So, here's where we are so far. And where I want to go next is these three apples. I just think these three apples here are going to be great. With maybe a tiny bit of a drawing or something over here and keeping a lot of this light. Maybe blending in a little bit more shadow over here. You can see that I have, uh, that I've used the magic eraser over in these areas to lighten this and kind of merge it a little bit into the background. I really like that for a lot of things that look just too static and strong that you can just take that sponge and play with it and paint with it and uh, you know pick up the color and redesign and it's just wonderful. So I've got a an orange, a happy happy orange here. And I'm gonna do it first and then I'm gonna come in with reds on top of it. Well, I think I'll go ahead and pick up some red down here. Oh, well, I don't want it there because this this apple's gonna be different than that apple. So what shall I do here? Well, let's thin it out here a little bit. And I don't care kind of what this, oops, there's gonna be a leaf there. There could still be a leaf there. I'm getting a little thinner because this is gonna be the lighter apple of the two. This, this one's gonna be really dark at some point. I didn't get these apple shapes drawn so well. I've got a tracing for my uh, classes that's got improved shaping on the apples for sure. Oh well, let's just pull a little orange into this leaf. We'll keep it soft though. And I wonder what'll happen if I do that. I like that. That looks nice and soft. See, I've got two apples. One of them's streaky. That's going to be this one. And one of them is like blood red. Just a little bit lighter in the center. And then there's this one over here. And I'm going to make it kind of in between, I do believe. Because I... I want another dark apple, but this is right near the edge, and I saw something one time that, uh, what is his name, Rogers, uh, Janet Rogers' husband, <laughs> I can't think of his name, anyway, he, uh, he had done a painting that had, uh, uh it was a, is seen with sailboats and stuff. But the brightest, strongest parts of the painting was he had a, something red on either end of the painting. Bright red. And it really, really worked. And I was sort of amazed that the bright stuff was right at the outer edges. Uh, the more you know about what you're doing, the more you can... Uh, break the rules if we actually have rules who knows what we have okay so that's my start on the apples 
And I guess I'll stop that and uh, wait. Yeah. Well, I think this is headed in the right direction. I sort of saw this one ahead of time as being just a real good thing. You can see I pulled out a little bit of more color from the apple out in here to make the beginning of shadows. You know, I might mention that some people seem to have the impression that loose painting means sloppy, and it really doesn't. I mean, again, this is about moving your, using your brain more. Well, I guess you don't really move your brain. <laughs> using your brain more than you're moving your than you're moving your wrists. I might, I could get very picky about some little areas here. And I'm very picky about some of the effects that I get. I know sometimes you see, see me paint a certain way and you think, oh, there's nothing to it. You just kind of slam it down, but you don't. So I'm going to soften some edges there. See immediately, you know the center of that's lighter and that's curving into the center. And I probably need to talk to that very carefully. So I'm mopping a little of the water up off of my brush. And now, now I'm squeezing out a little bit more and I'm just talking to it gently. I might even pull some color up from some areas. Most apples have got a little bit of streaks to them somewhere. I can't tell you one brand from the other, except the pink ladies look pink. I don't have one of those here. Let's pull up a little along that edge. I think we have a little light coming from that direction started here, so. Sophie thought she saw something dangerous in my room. It was a pillow that was moved. She is not a brave animal. It's not near dark enough red yet. <laughs> oh, okay, there. Let's pause it. 
let's do a little bit more of these apples. See where the colors bled over in here and there's a little back room and there's some green thingies acting up there. I'm good with all that. This creates entertainment. This is stuff that isn't there normally. I'm not saying that just being abnormal makes it entertaining, but there's there's something special about it. I want to put a little highlight on that apple. I don't really care which side it's on. I got room for it over here. There's a tiny piece of sponge. See, that kind of worked. I just feel like there ought to be a little bit more excitement about this apple than there is. That's not doing it. Well, we need some more dark in here then. So what have I got? I've got this red. I tell you, now this is where one of those neutral tints would probably be a real good idea. Um, I don't actually have neutral tint. I've got black. I've got a choice of either black, which is not pretty wet. In fact, I don't have much there. I don't know if I can get anything out of there. Oh, there's a little bit. Yeah, that might work. Let's get just a little bit more of it. Because the paint's pretty concentrated, too. So, it doesn't take much black to do it. In fact, you want to be real careful about using black, especially adding it to blues. You can just get something that is so dull. Okay, let's... I don't know that that is, I really didn't want this to be streaky and I could have pre-wet the paper. See that black is kind of streaking through the, the reds. It looks, it looks granulating, it shouldn't be. But probably when it dries, a lot of the time when I think I've got something with great granulation, it looks that way on the paper. And then when it dries, it's not. So let's just see if we can soften that edge. Maybe if I put a little water down. I hope that was on camera. Yeah, I guess it was. Let's just let that go like that for now. It looks strange because that's wet. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to have there. And then I want to go back to my regular red, what's left of it that doesn't have black in it. And yeah, I could put some phthalo green in there too. That would have done it. Let's go to this one. You know what? I think I'm going to pre-wet this one. At least part of it. I don't want to pre-wet the whole thing because uh, I don't want to run into that. Let's just do this. Probably what I should have done over here, too. Okay, and you notice I'm not using a sponge here, but you sure could. I'm just doing a little bit of that. I didn't 
I didn't dry the tip, just the side. I'm pretty at home with a flat brush, but here lately I've been using a round a little bit more. No particular reason. Well, I was watching Shirley Nichols paint one day, and she, well, I liked what was happening there. And I thought, you know, maybe I could go a little, do a little bit more with a round brush sometimes, and, and I can. Oh, okay, this, I like this. See, I've got some streaks in it. Happened to be on where I wanted to shadow side anyway. And I've left an area lighter. This apple drawing was really not the best in the world, was it? Oh. So, I'm going to leave that alone and come back later. See, it really does get foreshortened too much. So, you can see it a little bit better there. <laughs> 